probably are. And the game is underway. And what I consider to be a big surprise to me, and already it would be, I would be thinking, I think this guy, from what I've seen, is almost primarily or mainly a 1D4, you know, Queen's Pawn player. So it's clear to me that by playing, I know that Simon prefers facing 1D4. As we know, he's got the, he's a world expert in the Dutch defense. Mm -hmm. I won't give too many things away because I do know that he had some other ideas about what he'd play against 1D4 in this tournament. And you can understand why I'm not going to say that live on stream with number of rounds to go. I'd love to say it, but of course it wouldn't probably be in his best interest. So I would immediately think to myself here, this opponent's got something lined up and he must have something lined up against the French defense, mm -hmm. which Simon played in round one. Mm -hmm. And he must have something lined up against the Sicilian, which Simon's well known to play. And I know that Simon's gonna sit here and probably do the very sensible grandmaster thing of, obviously Simon's played against 1E4 many times in his life. But if I was sitting here as Simon, I'd say to myself, my opponent, has something specifically, I wouldn't be fearful of it, but he wants to play a certain line against the French, for example. Mm -hmm. So we see that he's decided on the Sicilian and thank you so much, as you already mentioned, to say, uh, Chespionage for the 12 months and to Maripan for the 16 months. Great oh, welcome Maripan, another, another fantastic player who, who won a, a, a year or two ago, won a fantastic tournament. Yeah, didn't, the, didn't she, so. the, she's actually a world champion though. What's the... I'm not That's gonna fantastic. go there to say the whole okay. title, but sure. the, the amateur is world champion. Do you know what? Yes. Just the fact that you can say, I, I remember seeing I a brief clip of Vichy. If you can't communicate in two words that you're world champion, then you're struggling <laughs> with a few things in life, aren't you? So I think we can give, so congratulations and fantastic performance, a world champion in the chat. What a brilliant thing to have with us. So much Absolutely. love to you as well. Let's talk about, so Fiona, how do you, what's your rep repertoire against one E4? You're a very attacking player yourself in the sort of Simon mold? Yeah, I, I am an attacking player, but my opening repertoire uh, against E4 isn't very attacking. It's mostly one uh, E5. And then, well, you will just keep plugging the courses, right? I sometimes uh, play the Karakan uh, on which I did a, a course for Ginger GM uh, with Alex. Um, I uh, just, never... to, just to remind, just tell people, of course, who are unfamiliar with Alex, obviously, just a little bit who he is, if that's all right. International master Alex Estanilov as uh, of Ireland, hence maybe some people, you know, mentioned the Irish accent. Believe it or not, I have never played uh, the Sicilian in my life. Wow, that surprised me because your style, yeah. as I say, you know, we're quite similarly matched. And if I got you into the end game, a queen exchange, I would be smiling already. No guarantee of result. If you made the position tactical and messy, I would be scared, genuinely very scared. And I've suffered at your hands before, as you well know, particularly over the chessboard. Well, I, I think you're being, uh, like I've suffered more at your hands over the chessboard than the other way around. But yeah, I do believe we have quite similar sides. I'm happy uh, to see a Sicilian, less happy to see let's, the it, bishop b5 absolutely let's talk about this and it's clear that this was uh white's i think it's very clear that this is one of white's ideas in playing this line knight f3 d6 and on white's next move he played what's kind of broadly known as an anti-sicilian i believe it's kind of known as the canal attack i'm not quite sure why that is the case but the names of openings and me don't really get on to be honest with you but bishop b5 is played by white move three is considered to be an anti-sicilian because it avoids all the sort of absolute mainline theories of the dragon, the Nidorf, so many other Sicilians that you can play in these situations in what's called an open Sicilian. Bishop b5 is always considered to be a sort of spoiling move. It, it reduces a lot of the tactics. It reduces a lot of the complications that can arise from the open Sicilian, a lot of those positions. It's considered to be quite a, it's got a very solid reputation from the white side, this Bishop b5 check. And I know there are a number of moves that can be played here, Knight, to d7 a good example of how sort of solid it can get and what a sort of line that white might be hoping for is if black interposed with the bishop say bishop takes queen takes white then castles maybe plays c3 d4 stakes a claim in the center you can see that already with an exchange of one set of minor pieces it's already going to reduce any of the major tensions or that can arise from the open sicilian simon of course well well versed this has played the move knight c6 which I believe doesn't have, it's not considered to be as 
accurate as, as putting something on D7. However, it very much leads to the sort of positions which he might be looking for. Yeah, I guess knight c6 is maybe a, a little more fighting. Uh, I mean, if, if white wants to exchange, first of all, uh, we'll get a, a slight imbalance in the pawn uh, structure. White would have to, to give up uh, the, the bishop pair here as well. So I think uh, knight c6, you know, Simon um, is maybe picking one of the more fighting lines. I see there are questions in the chat. Uh, Chess Pets are UK and good to see you. He's saying, uh, again, you face a GM, why wouldn't you go for the open? I mean, Blair, you said that one E4 isn't, for starters, his main. Absolutely. So I, think, absolutely. so I think the issue is, I totally understand what JT's point is. I, I take his point in the sense that, you know, there are, with computers and the amount of theory these days, it's, you know, there are many lines which, if you know which, which variation Simon's going to play, for example, if he played, so if we'd gone for an open Sicilian with a dragon variation, for example, knight c3, g6, you can get very deep into the position using theory, and it's considered to be that white's got the slightly better of these positions. The, the, the dragon is not in no way dead yet. You know, computers are showing us that there's many ways to play. But JT's right. You could get, if you really knew your stuff, and you knew that Simon was going to play the dragon, you might be very inclined to play this. But Simon does have other tools at his disposal, including things like the Dragon Dwarf, where you can sort of combine it with an A6 idea. So I can understand the point, but it's very difficult to in sort of 24 hours. I'm not saying the guy's never played E4, but to sort of get into hardcore theory overnight is kind of very difficult. I mean, bear in mind as well, it's a double round, so there is a lot <laughs> less time than uh, mm. 24 hours. I mean, the yeah, round last night went quite late. Uh, so between the time the pairings came out and the game, I don't know, there must have been you know, 12 hours at most. Um, some of these hours, ideally, you should spend sleeping <laughs> before a double round. Uh, so for those, especially double rounds, there, there really isn't <clears throat> that much time uh, to prepare. Clearly, he already prepared a, a slight surprise by going E4, but yeah, checking all the open Sicilians. Um, exactly. I think it's also a very personal choice, you know. Uh, do you want to, when you're playing a, a Grandmaster, someone who's higher rated than you, um, I think it's really a matter of style. I, I don't think that necessarily the, the advice should always be, you know, go for the most uh, open, aggressive, uh, principled lines. I think there is certainly something to be said, you know, for trying to play a, a more quiet game. Absolutely. But I think I take JT's point. We saw, I don't know if you saw, we saw in round one that his opponent, not a very good day at the office for them, I have to say, but they were kind of work. They've always played the main line of the Steinitz from the white side, the Steinitz variation of the French defense. And I, I, they got to move, I think they moved three. And I think they sort of had a crisis of conscience and decided that they'd go into an exchange variation. Yeah. And it's sort of like their position just got passive, slightly worse, you know. And it's like they probably went home that night, or not home, went back to the hotel and thought, I sort of missed an opportunity here to, to, why was I scared of doing what I know and what I normally do? So I was obviously well versed in these lines, but to suddenly change over the board may not, well, certainly wasn't ideal. And it looked like that's what his opponent did. Clearly today, at least White, you know, rightly or wrongly, has clearly had this position in mind, I believe. Yeah, uh, we see that White is playing uh, very quickly. I think all the moves we have seen uh, after Knight C6, you know, White Castle then played Rook E1. Rook E1 is a typical move here because now very often uh, if Simon plays A6 uh, to ask the bishop on B5 where it's going to go, very often the bishop will drop back all the way to, to F1. Yeah, but it's a very nice position covering there. I'm not quite sure it's in this exact position, but it won't surprise you to hear that Simon, and maybe this is what maybe what this is what John's hoping for, in the sense that Simon really wants to bounce back with a victory today. Of course he does. He's the higher rated player. And I know that in a number of positions, Simon sort of played a move such as knight f6. I assume, let's just say, um, white, let's, I'm not saying it's the best move. Let's say white plays knight c3, maybe pawn to c3 makes a lot more sense. And I know that Simon's played a move such as g5 before in this type of position. I'm not that quite sure in this exact position. That surprise me in the slightest. Wow. Um, yeah, g5. Yeah, as you said, you're not sure if it's here. Correct, yeah. We're not, I know that like, he's played I, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure he's going to do something like that 
<clears throat> this morning because I agree with you. He wants to bounce back with a win uh, for sure. But as we all know, G5 um, is very double-edged. Uh, By the way, you're quite right. I don't know if you knew this was going to happen, but Simon has actually played pawn to a6. And you're expecting white not to exchange the bishop. Exchanging the bishop for the knight here makes a lot less sense, of course, because with the bishop already being on d7, it doesn't, it gives up the light square bishop. It doesn't even have the benefit of doubling black's pawns on the c file. So you're confident expecting, I guess we're confident expecting bishop to f1. It would be nice to have the live, I'm still keeping an eye out for them tonight to have the live pictures because I suspect the only reason Bishop F1's not been played is because he's gone for a coffee or a, an early glass of water or some such. Because I don't really think there's anything really sensible to consider here for White because Bishop A4 runs into, I think, what's what's beautifully entitled the Noah's Ark trap. Do you know that's what it's called for you? No, I didn't know that. So this is like the sort of the exact position. It's the Noah's Ark trap where I'm sure, I know you'll be able to see what's coming next. B5 attacks the bishop. The bishop goes to b3 and the bishop is trapped after pawn to c4. So I've managed to actually, you know, t tell He's you something. He's something, something already. Right. Right, okay. <laughs> and by the way, no April Fool's there. That's generally called the Noah's Ark trap when, when the bishop comes out in a Sicilian defense. Obviously, the pawn already needs to be on c5 in order to trap the bishop on b3 eventually. Um, so drink, d d d Dr. Drink and Drive, what a name that is, <laughs> Dr. Drink and Drive. <laughs> Of all the, I mean, do you re, do you think he's really got a doctorate in this? And if he has, probably. You know, yeah. You know, don't do that. I was, was going to say don't do that at home, but maybe drinking, drive don't at do home. it anywhere. Don't do it anywhere. More to the point, absolutely. <laughs> and he's been followed in by drunk chess. I don't know if these two are in cahoots. By the way, I'm astonished. Do you know what White played? This is surely not. He took on C six. Well, I see. He's going to want to go E five, isn't he? I guess. But so therefore. I, if you joined me, sorry to go in. If you joined me yesterday, my predictions of what was going to happen next was just like it was one, maybe one out of ten. I, but I'm shocked by this. He's, I reckon he's clearly going to go here afterwards. But I'm now in JT's camp. If I'm play, if I'm playing this, this just this does this just look, this just looks wrong to me. I'll be honest with you. I can I just say this is. Uh, but JT was saying that White wants to spoiler alert the whole thing with pawn to e5 in in the next position. I I just. I, if I was to Simon here, okay, my opponent's, you know, trying to exchange off a couple of pieces. He's trying to make sure the game isn't in Simon's wheelhouse of sharp tactical ideas. But Simon can play any sort of chess, can't he? I mean, and, I, I have, I, okay, I'll let you finish here. No, no, please, please carry on. No, I had finished. Fortunately, the thing is, from from White's time management, I strongly suspect uh, that this is something that he has looked at and it was his plan going into the game to take on c6 here as we see a couple more moves coming yeah sure let's let's here. follow them out so this e5 is actually not what happened he's now gone pawn to d4 um pawn takes which is what the dr drink and drive had suggested right even before white took on on c6 he actually said wrong blair bishop takes c6 and d4 which led me again to think that this um is very likely i'm gonna you know what i'll let you talk for a second i'm gonna look up how many games i met yeah please do because i don't i don't actually have any any engines yeah. running or any databases running so um I respect to dr drink and drive who's obviously had a had a night off the source as we say in, in england he's very switched on and this clearly was wise i guess this was clearly wise preparation a line which is not known to me i'm not unsurprised i'm not a sitting player but I, so white's played knight takes d4 but Simon seems unrattled, unfazed. He's gone knight to f6. So, of course, there is now the possibility at some stage that white can restore the sort of equality of minor pieces by at some stage taking playing knight takes c6. The downside, of course, of that would be black's very much getting a pawn towards the center, then controlling the d5 square, and he will have this lovely half open b file to work with. So, I'm not quite, I'm, I mean, I'm obviously open up to chat. I'm not actually sure. Apparently, everyone's played this except me. So you've never played this well, fairly. So there are only two people in the world who who haven't played this line either, as white or black. I certainly haven't played. I it. mean, I've I've just looked it up, and there are some big names here. Oh, uh, really? As white, okay. Bishy Anand, Anish oh, Bui, okay. uh, Grishuk, uh, Mickey oh. Adams, and also <laughs> a certain David Howell. So David oh wow! Uh, so there we go. So. Uh, 
-hmm. Thanks for looking it up because you'll 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 stop me getting into it. I'm just by what oh my goodness, at, Blair! You know what I just realized? I said Grishuk has played it as mm -hmm. white. Do you know against whom? Simon Williams. Yes. <laughs> So the guy has done his research. There he we has, go. Yeah, he is following by, a game right by now. By the way, can you Google Dr. Drink and Drive? Because he's insistent that he's played this as well. <laughs> but can he? <laughs> I'll just, you know, input the position and add Dr. Drink and Drive. Uh, by the way, Simon deviated here from his game again against Grishuk, which was played, actually, that game was played in the Do Mr. Dodgy Invitational. So it's a shame we don't have Michael with us uh, today. We had him yesterday, of course. Yeah. yeah. Uh, in that game, Simon went G6 here. And do you know what's, um, what, from your database search, do you know what's the, so this has got, obviously got a very, unbeknownst to me, a very good reputation for white if the players such as you said have played it. And particularly a name that jumps out at me is Mike, the, the English Grandmaster Michael Adams, who's very much a strong, structurally based player. Mm -hmm. He loves to have, you know, like a very, so, a very connected pawn structure, no, you know, very few weaknesses. So a very decent, a very strategical, solid, dare I say, obviously an incredibly talented player, but a very Mickey, um, solid approach to, to chess. Mickey beat uh, Topalov uh, in this line, actually. So, um, yes, there, I think maybe for now we need to, <laughs> until this develops, we need to tone down the shit talk about the way <laughs> life has gone on. <laughs> Coming with the... Uh, Profanity already in the morning, Fiona. That's uh, like your first warning. I think I've been. You okay, you're, gonna, like, you're allowed to say that. My producer's telling me. Your producer's okay. I'm glad. Um, By the way, my producer's me, so you know. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah, this is uh, certainly not without, without venom. And after, oh goodness. As I say in Latin, studio may regulate may, which means, you know, my studio, my rules. So there we go. That was pigeon Latin, by the way. I'm not sure studio is a Latin word, but there we go. Let's hope it was. I doubt and, studio was a, a word back in the day. Yes, no, no, back in the day, indeed. Um, so, by the way, so I did play G6 before, and against that was against Christian. Yeah. So there we go. Um, uh, do you know what, what's the most popular move by Black in well, this edition? Let me, I'm just <laughs> manually inputting it, uh, everything again, because somehow the... I'm a little bit, I'm not worried, but after Knight F6, I'm just worried, is there a possibility that, that White can sort of like combine ideas of... I was doing, no, not quite going to work just yet because I was thinking combine ideas of taking on C6 with E5, but I don't think these work because the White bat rank is particularly weak so i was just thinking about a way in which white can sort of aim to get that sort of very dry quiet position for example well so he did take right he did take on c6 so it went knight okay. takes c6 yeah. b takes c6 and now he's gone for a, a sort of a maroxy bind the, the main like the most played um, is it here actually so, uh, e5 <laughs> hasn't been played even once <laughs> no i'm not surprised it, no, it doesn't work at all by the way in that position I, I was quite confident that i was just trying to work out so in all credit to john he maybe he maybe he hasn't had too much he's probably had a bit of sleep but he's clearly had you know respect yeah. actual respect to him not only is this a very well considered and very well rated line by the the, the sheer quality of the players who played it from white I think it, it, I guess it makes a lot of sense at some point, I guess we, is the idea to put the bishop on B2? Uh, oh, wait, I, I guess so, I'm just finding another mm. very funny trivia fact. The highest rated game we are now following is David Howell against Pantala Hare Krishna. And well. this was a, a game, I was actually there for it. It was a game that lasted 200 and 36 moves before oh, ending in the draw. <laughs> that was that the game where I remember this, like that David, yeah. had, at some point David realized that um, he might actually go be going for the records of like the longest game or the longest, certainly longest grandmas game, or even maybe the longest sort of serious game in history. And I understand that after it was drawn, I think David stumbled into a threefold repetition or something. I and think... I think that David was kicking himself, not because he wasn't able to convert the game. It, it looked like 
that Harry Krishna was always holding it. But David was upset because he didn't actually, he kept him there for like, I don't know, nine hours. And he the fact that the that game he, concluded he was upsetting. He didn't realize, he realized afterwards that he could have gone for the record potentially by avoiding uh, the 50 move rule in certain ways. Okay. Um, but yeah, the, the game really lasted long enough. <laughs> As it absolutely was. i think because it was clear that for about a good hundred moves i know that david absolutely you know doesn't give up and he always tries his absolute best he's got this incredible chessboard stamina but i'm pretty sure it was clear that harry krishna was holding the i can't remember the exact position but it was pretty clear that harry krishna was holding the draw for 100 moves there were very few dangers in the position for a player of his caliber and i joke that obviously you know, straight after that game, Harry Krishna put one line through his Christmas card list. And I don't think David Howe's going to be getting the card anytime soon from Pantala Harry Krishna, a fantastically strong Indian Grand Master, of which there are incredible numbers, by the way. Yeah, I mean, it's just like, I feel like every other week, you know, I see a tweet or something that there is a new uh, Indian Grand Master. One of them, one of their latest, is actually one of the two players leading the tournament on four out of four. Uh, Pranav. Pranav is the main. Fiona, player. Fiona, mm -hmm. that was my prediction for the winner of this tournament from round one. Pranav. Yep. Wow. Venkatesh, also known as Buddy Pranav, a prolifically strong, uh, rapid and blitz player on the internet. I think he's about sixteen. I said to Danny, Danny just scoffed at me. I said to Danny, I think this Pran, I think that Buddy, Buddy is his name. Buddy like, Pranav, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a beautiful I name. I think that's the it? nickname he got in the Chess World channel. I think ah, uh, yeah. he rose, you know, he, he spent a lot of time in that channel playing against the guys. And um, like that was the first, like that's how I first discovered him. Like he was very often, you know, Chess World, they used to do all these sub battles and very often and he was the top board there. So that's where I first heard of him. There we go. But I said to, I mean, I, I said to Danny, I mean, I, maybe it's a bit punchy, but I said to Danny, I think he'd be the highest rated of any of these players in this field in a year's time. And Danny sort of said to me, what, you think he could be 26, 70? And I went, yeah, I do. Absolutely. I mean, I've seen some of his games. I saw his, I think he beat Magnus online the other day and it was yeah. just, okay, it was a, a rapid or blitz game, maybe a blitz game, three minute, or maybe a rapid game, but it was just crushing. And it just, mm. you could see, you know, his, his classic, you know, young Indian, I don't know, prodigies, I don't know if that's an overused word, but just an incredibly strong young Indian player of which, you know, you say that. And he's tied for the lead with um, a fellow Indian, but a, a, a sort of a, 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 an absolute an absolute veteran by the, yeah. by the Indian standards these days. A guy who's won the tournament, uh, shared first in this tournament before and won it outright before, Abhijit Gupta, yeah? Yeah, Abhishek Gupta, I think, one of the most experienced uh, open tournament players. He's won so many of them, as you mentioned. I think he's won Reykjavik twice, once shared, once outright. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so and understandably, they're playing today, both the only two players yep. on 100% 4 out of 4. Buddy Pranav has white, Abhijit Gupta has black. I, I, I don't think that's, I think that's going to be a fighting game. I don't, I don't get with these young Indian guys and Pranav having the white pieces. I don't think he's going to have due reverence to his opponent. I mean, respect, of course, but I think he's going to try and win. It wouldn't surprise me if he tries to get nine out of nine. Apparently, Daddy was saying there's another young Indian who's not heard of who scored nine out of nine in a, in a very decent tournament the other day. So once they don't, they don't just half out in round nine. They just and take them like you and I, friend. If we ever got to eight out of eight, I'm pretty sure we'd shake hands. And start celebrating at the bar, wouldn't we? On like eight and a half out of nine, maybe. I don't know if that's your. You're quite a fighting player, aren't you? Well, but I mean, nine, nine round events are a grueling. Uh, so I think if I'm on eight out of eight, I wouldn't mind, you know. You uh, just what you just you'd actually not turn up for the last game, maybe. Just like you're already <laughs> celebrating the night before. Like I know you're not a disrespectful character, of course, but or maybe just to play one move and then. <laughs> Just leave the board, I don't know, not, not something you'd do, of course. But. I think, you know, I've only uh, foited it. Is that the word? Foited it? Probably, right? I've only not shown up to a game once in my entire uh, career, which spans a lot of games. And uh, you won't be surprised to hear that that happened at Panretti. <laughs> oh, of course. Well. <laughs> I mean, but I, I mean, it's never accept. It's I mean, the wrong word acceptable. It's never. It's never. It's frowned upon most places. But I think if you want a free, if you want one free pass in life 
to miss a game, I think Bunratty is where you would um, where would you be I, understandable to take. I it? want. To, I mean, it's not that I didn't want to play. I just did not wake up despite I, multiple I, I guess, alarms. I, I guess the issue was you were staying quite a long way away from the uh, playing hall. Yeah. That sounds right. Well, on like the second floor, for example, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Is, that, is that the idea? Yeah, it's like too, it's too far to get down to get to your game. Anyway, um, we have had a move. A G six. Can you? Have you still? Hopefully, you still might have your database yes. up. That'd be quite nice. You did it. I assume you know, I G six is is a sensible move. Uh, yes. Let me see. G six uh, still the main the main move. Uh, I was going to make a, a point about um, Simon's um you know the position he finds himself in now i think it's not a very fun position i would not want to be uh simon right now for starters it's never usually fun playing chess in the morning at least not for me and i i don't think simon is much of a morning chess person either um you're black uh and you know your opponent yes he spent five minutes but we know that some of those he was probably away getting coffee, as you said. And Simon understands that his opponent um, has looked at this mm, exact really. position, probably even this morning. Um, and it's not a, a fun position. I don't think Simon had any way of um, expecting uh, this position to show up on the board. I mean, not just this position, but even this bishop b5 Sicilian. Um, I mean, even move one came him as a bit of a, a surprise right so slightly surprised me yeah yeah so it's it's not a it's not a fun position and in a, in a way it's a funny situation because simon played g6 and his opponent sort of more or less blitzed out b3 and there's always this um you feel in two minds because as long as your opponent keeps playing the the good thing is you know that you're still kind of playing the main moves the bad news is that you know that they're still in their prep so uh it's a it's a funny situation in a way but i think simon is doing you know sensible things he's developing his pieces he hasn't done anything uh crazy and the only thing I'm wondering is, you know, if, if I'm Simon here as black and I know he wants to win this game, but it's a position that is very solid uh, for white with these two pawns on, on e4, c4, making uh, any d5 break um, very tough. And if you're black, you want to play for more. Of course, you're looking for pawn breaks at some point, but it's just yeah apparently Plukwas telling us who Plukwas telling us that one of the ideas for black or mm -hmm. you know from a from an objectively strong point of view is to play knight d7 and exchange off obviously what currently is they both bishops look very very promising on this diagonal but they are opposing each other but once again if knight d7 is is the best move we can un probably understand why the dark squares then become available for this knight the issue with that is another set of minor pieces has been exchanged and so white has no no structural weaknesses currently whatsoever. Two pawn islands. Nice control over the d5 square, as you say, Fiona. If knight d7 is the best move, mm. it comes with the practical cost mm. of exchanging off, as I say, another set of light pieces, minor pieces, as other people call them. Maybe, and, but that would be a long sort of grind to, to try and win this as black. And But it's quite hard to see a way in which this is not, if Simon, obviously Simon wants to win this game, it's going to be quite hard to see anything other than a long, strategical, nibbling sort of game where Black might be looking to play A5 to A4, try to sort of create one weakness in White's camp. You know, the dream of maybe having that B pawn to I up. We have, we'd have actually one pawn island as Black in that situation if we can get that exchange. Of course, the, the traditional knowledge or understanding of chess is that in order to try and push for a victory, we need to create a second weakness. And so the first maybe dream or hope is to create one weakness in White's position, a little bit of a backward pawn on B3. Even if we were able to achieve that, it's, it's still we've got to now consider where, where could we, you know, even if these were possibilities, where could we create a second weakness down the line? Quite hard to envision, envision that happening, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, once you mentioned this plan of pushing the A pawn, I'm like, okay, that's something at least, right? Because when I first looked at this position, 
again, I think it's also my my inexperience um, with black and the Sicilian. I just when I first looked at it, I thought oh, I would be very um, not very unhappy, but quite unhappy here as black because I think much like Simon, um, you know, I love when I have a, a clear, ideally a clear attacking plan. Uh, there is none of that here. So yeah, this is going to be a, a strategic battle. I do agree with you that pushing the apron is going to be one plan uh, for sure. The other thing I'm, I'm, I wonder, first of all, what's white going to do, but let's imagine white plays a, I don't know, I was going to say a pass move. What? Let's imagine queen d3. Like, I, I, the thing is, I'm not sure yet if my knight, I guess the knight wants to go to, to c3 rather than d2, so I'm not oh, sure. And I actually disagree with you. I think the knight wants to yeah. go to d2, not because it's no, it's unlikely to get from c3 to come into um, d5. It's, I, it's The reason I don't want to put the knight on c3 is because I want to retain the sort of tension of, mm. of the bishops. And yeah. from from white strategical, what the way it's approached this game suggests to me that if black ever moves this knight to d7, which we're being told is a understandably good move because it's aiming at the e5 square, it's aiming at the c5 square, which down the line would support this a5 to a4. I think in that moment, white would very much like to immediately exchange off those mm -hmm. those dark square bishops. Again, trying to uh, simplify the position a little bit more, trying to reduce any of the, the, the potential tactical combinations that's the reason why it's not so much I, I i don't want to have the knight necessarily on c3 it's more that i just don't want to block in excuse me bishop yeah like I, that. I shouldn't that's the reason <clears throat> what I, what i meant and the reason i suggested queen d3 was i meant more after the exchange so if you put ah, uh, yeah, queen okay. d3 back on on the board sure. and uh, we imagine that black goes knight d7 and the bishops come off <clears throat> it was more here that i was wondering and maybe the answer would still be 92, I don't know, but it's more well, in this position that I was wondering. I mean, I think maybe the path, maybe the knight has a little bit more future because we, we'd, if we if we ever sort of force black to play, not force black to play C5, but if ever black plays C5, of course, this square might become, you know, tempting. We'd have to then reroute the knight again, don't misunderstand me. It could do a real crazy journey. But black would be very reluctant in almost any situation to play E6, this this d5 square is pretty well controlled by white and of course we'd be giving them a big target of the pawn on d6 so let's go to the live position again just to see who's thinking so finally um it seems a little strange to me that that white's thinking maybe it's strange just because he seems to be so well like almost mm -hmm. like this was a position he might have envisaged in his mind already like he was not dreaming of it's it's pretty strong to be dreaming of this position as white i mean the guy's got to have some sort of ambitions and you wouldn't wake up in the morning dreaming of this as white or black, would you, Fiona? You wouldn't be like, no. it's not rocking your, it's not rocking your world Although quite, having, is it? Having said that, I, I have, from the white side, uh, on occasion, played some bishop e5 uh, Sicilian. I mean, if I had to choose a side here, I would uh, choose white, I think. Um, and funny enough, I, I choose black just because... And to JT's point out in support of your idea, by the way, this the, the one benefit of having the knight on c3, for example, is... Is that it looks it, at a5. Mm, it, yeah, it stops us <laughs> playing the... We'd have to really sort of like... But then again, this looks quite a natural sort of approach to me. So my idea would be just putting a couple of moves on the board. Knight c3. I'm kind of quite keen to get my knight to c... Okay, I'm going to play mm. a5 first, by the way. But just if we put a couple of moves on the board, queen g2, in principle, I quite like this idea. The reason I want my knight on c5 is because a it supports the idea of a4. I'd have to watch out for the response b4, of course. But then if I do get this exchange in, my knight's already well placed, targeting mm. the the weakness that I'm sort of going after. So let's have a little sort of like not an absolutely um, a, an absolute. Should we put a poll up? Who prefers white or black? Should we try that? We haven't yeah, had a poll yet. Yeah, because I I think You're... from what I'm seeing in the chat, um, people are. Listen. In... let's just do you want to do that for me because you're so you're so skilled fiona that you know I'd let, let's put a poll up who prefers white and who prefers black what do you reckon i reckon i think that there might be a simon bias here but we're talking about in principle i fiona went for white and by the way there is no just to assure everyone there's no right answer i suspect the computers will probably give this effectively 0.00 it's much more a question of which sort of side let's go to live position to show you what we're talking about i think the question is much more about in principle, which side? Apparently, apparently the, 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 engine, 
Apparently, the, apparently the engine does like white a little bit here, and th I, that doesn't surprise me. Thank you very much for the subscription, Christopher. Very nice to see you. Um, it doesn't surprise me that the engine slightly likes white, simply because white's incredibly solid. They've got a bit more space and a bit more control, I guess. Of they've just got a bit more space, and in principle, what is there to separate the two sides? Arguably, a little bit of space. Therefore, I can appreciate why the engine likes white but from a practical point of view it white's position is very good at the moment don't get me wrong and it's got some potential but it feels to me that black has it seems a bit easier to to formulate a, a dynamic plan for black it may not seem like a lot to people but if we do get this a5 to a4 in then we can have this one you know pawn mass on the king side and some open mm -hmm. lines sort of benko style open line compensation down the a and B file. I think obviously white's for me white doesn't really and I, I don't think even if it's a potential I don't think it's ever going to happen it's a good idea but JT was saying if white went to F4 this would give black you know definitely much more chances I think white's going to keep really solid really he's actually played queen to E2 so there we go. By the way Blair it pains me to say that you were wrong uh, <laughs> <laughs> There is no no Simon bias in the poll. Have you cast your vote yet? Have I cast my vote? Oh my word! A, yeah. a misclick's. I've typed cast my vote now. Obviously, that's just slightly equalising the, um, the 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 scores. Uh, there's a couple of extra votes. There is no uh, Simon bias. So people are actually genuinely voting on. Yeah, JT yeah, shot that I, I might didn't be allow wrong. Any I didn't uh, any rigging of the polls. So these are. How do you rig a poll on Twitch? Tell you you can allow people to use their channel points to cast more votes. Or... By the way, um, I've, I've, I'm looking now and apparently I've now got, I've got infinite channel points. <laughs> what do you mean infinite? Oh, because you're the GM. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So I can sort of keep highlighting my messages galore and without any cost to my, you know, my, my, the new currency, which is Ginger GM channel points. I mean, they, apparently they're, they're going to be alongside, I don't know, Ethereum, But if Bitcoin you're on Simon's account, something. you have failed, at least last night when I watched the end of the stream, to send off uh, some raids and share the love, you know? Of course I should do that, actually, because I'm, I, I think I'm getting... I'm getting a lot of like criticism for some of my handling of these things, which is understandable. I'm get, but I get so caught up in the chess, obviously, you know. <laughs> uh, you think you can highlight more than me, drunk chess? Well, I'm not going to take you on because I, 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 I do like a challenge, but I think I'd spend my whole day just. Can I have perm highlight on and just keep? T no, I'm not going to do that, of course. <laughs> Going back to the chess, so White's played a very and totally. Is this still theory, by the way? I suppose I imagine well, there this were might have only happened a couple in some of, games. Okay. There were only a couple of games um, before uh, before this position and was no queen of two. I think we're now, as far as I can tell, a uh, new territory. But even if we are in new territory, it may be sort of very marginal new territory. For example, if white, I'm just suggesting if white, if, if previous game had gone queen c2, for example, or queen d2, these are obviously every slight difference is a difference, but yeah, in principle I, I, it doesn't change a lot, does it? I see two moves uh, played before queen d2, as you just mentioned, one of them and knight d2 the other. Yeah, I mean, I, but then again, you know, for example, in the other game that's been played before, if, if white went knight d2, it could then transpose, I'm not saying the best move, but it could then transpose by playing queen e2 the following move. Queen d2 does make some sense to me, but then again, you know, then, then takes the square away from the knight. But I think, so I guess, Fiona, I have to say once again, wrong again, I suspect you're right all along that knight c3 is the desired direction of the um, of the knight from, from, from b1, certainly yeah. in the short term. I think queen e2, the, the move that white played, makes a lot of sense. Um, I think the rook potentially would make like the rook would like to be on b1 here. the queen on e2 also protects the bishop on b2 yeah i'm not sure that's relevant but always uh, i guess you've e5, always got to consider e5. as black this possibility yeah. of e5 thank you very much to frank rutter appreciate all your support friend i'm just going to get a glass of water i'll literally be 20 seconds yeah. that's all right but so sure. hold the fort please i will hold the fort i'm once again flabbergasted porku porku piglet are you actually like what you wrote in the chat might sound very weird to most people, but it's actually Luxembourgish. Hi, I like Kugelai. 
there's been a, a crazy, there's been an explosion of, of Luxembourgish people that I'm suddenly seeing in chat. So do let me know. I actually, Blair, did you hear What's what that? I what said? I, miss? I didn't, I'm I afraid. You were, you were wearing headphones. Um, can you read Porky Piglet's message out for me, please? Hey, Eli Kakalai. You know what that is? No. It's Luxembourgish. Who is it? <laughs> yeah, hi, Eli Kugelai. Oh, hi, Eli Kugelai. So I was, uh, my pronunciation yeah, was so a bad. little bit sketchy, but it not, was not, not, not so bad. But I'm, isn't it? like I was saying, I, I've been lately, somehow, a lot of Luxembourgish people have randomly popped up on, on Twitch, which is nice to see. Anyway, at the night, that looks ugly. Yeah, but D three is coming to mind then. Yeah, so we're trying to distract the knight. Aha! Ha ha ha! What about this? What about rook takes a6? <coughs> First ban, thank you very much. Just got there in my mind as well. The knight being such a bad defender of past pawns. Rook takes a6. Looks like a woo, tricky idea. Nasty indeed. These things, these things coming into the four. That's very nasty. It might still, the game might still continue there, of course. Without queens, yeah, definitely that that would be a draw. If all the if all the queens get, yeah, that's fun enough, Victor. You can't. I've noticed that you can't actually then stop. You might have to take a perpetuous back. You can't actually stop this poor queening. But let's not get too fixated. This doesn't need to happen. Yes, definitely. If the queen side gets liquidated, this is a there's no basically no chance for either side. It's a very complex endgame. It's amazing to see. You know, people think that middle games obviously are complex by definition, but you get to a situation like this in an endgame. And it's almost even more complicated, it seems, with all the calculation, because it's such mathematical calculation. Um, yes, if the queen side gets liquidated, so if all these pawns were to get exchanged, two white for one black, uh, provided the knight could just get to a sensible square like f4, or maybe even e3 or g2 or g5, it would basically be a very straightforward draw for both sides. And it would be very hard to imagine either side being able to win that. So where are we at? We're at the situation of, uh, let's go back to the live board. So what, what's happened? Knight d3, and Simon's gone rook a7. I think rook b7 would have been a better idea, but it's very tricky in this situation. As I say, and rook, rook, you'd have to see this, you'd have to see, so I would have played this, you have to see this clever trick, rook takes a6, which apparently according to Victor isn't even winning for black, white can still take that off. But there we go. The problem with rook a7, I guess, is that white can start moving his king, yeah? And so that's the thing. This is now looking a little bit... If white can get his king, and already on g2 the king's inside the square, what that means is that even if the pawn were to be able to advance for black, the white king can either come round to prevent it becoming a queen. This looks very bad for black, if I'm not mistaken, because let's just say king g2, king g7, am I not threatening knight c5 straight away? Because if you start trying to distract me with your pawn, I've now got the potential of bringing my king back round to stop that pawn. My idea being here, I just want to play a6, b5, etc, etc. Sorry, I want to stop the pawn first, of course. So I would obviously stop my stop the pawn with king f3 or king f1, either way. Then I want to use my knight. But the rook has got no chance of stopping a construction of knight and the two pawns working in unison here. They're working together. Live board. I assume that yeah, King G2 looks like uh well how what can black do against King G2? This looks horrible. My plan being I just well, my plan being as I say I want to play knight c5, a6, b5. Very quickly those pawns very quickly coming down. Yeah, rook a7 I think is sub definitely suboptimal. Yeah, I think you have to play I think you really I think the best move definitely is rook b7 because it holds up. Then again, why can't white do the same thing anyway? I'm not quite sure what, what stops white. I'm not quite sure what stops white doing the same thing anyway, just playing king g2. So, rook b7, maybe white just does the same thing anyway. I'm not quite sure what the difference is. It just felt to me rook b7 was the better move, but it doesn't mean it's like, what's the objective evaluation? Don't know. <coughs> it feels to me like white's winning, yeah. 4-1 <coughs> one to Man City, by the way. Um, it feels to me that white well, the white should be winning this position in the fullness of time by bringing the king in and then using the combined forces of the knight, using the king effectively to stop. 
Yeah, so rook b7, again, yeah, fair point. I mean, it's hard. But the idea is if you go a6, my plan was to go rook b6. But I can only do this when the king's miles away or far enough away for my pawn to be able to push through to be a queen. Once my plan, my plan of rook b7, once the white king moves just one square to the to, to g2, it's already inside what's called the queening square of the black pawn. So I'm already, you're correct, I'm already under, under pressure of being hit by a6 so i can understand why simon went rook a7 actually i don't know what's the best move objective evaluation don't know someone in the chat help me out not looking at engines not doing it now i've had enough um let's just see what the live position is yeah white's thinking i can't why has white played king g2 unless he's yeah it's very shaky even if black i don't even know i don't know how black black can hold this because uh, king g2 this this if white plays king g2 isn't white got some immediate I might, hold on, with rook and a7, I guess that's the point. White still needs to play the knight to c5. He has to play king g2. He's finding his stride is Johnny Cornelis, or John Cornelis. I've seen him referred to in different ways. Feels like Simon might be in trouble. Oh, don't tell me to go up to beat Buddy Pranav. Obviously, the rating performance, by the way, only one crazy dude. The rating performance of like when you're on a hundred percent never makes any sense to a degree. All right, he just immediately played King G seven, did he? Did he just play King King G seven? Hmm, has he got time for this? Yeah, the issue is when you're on a hundred percent, it doesn't really mean a lot. I know he has, he's got to try and do this. Of course, he's got to try and do this. Um, it do, well, in fairness, span it does mean a thing because it does mean that he has. It does mean he's beat, he's got five out of five and he's got a massive rating performance. But yeah, I, I take your point. When you have a hundred percent, no, he'd never rage quit Jimmy Billy unless he was ill, and that's not a rage quit. So no, no, Simon would never rage quit a tournament. No, he would only he would only withdraw if he was ill or anything like that. He would never, even if he was on like one out of six, you know, he would, which is unlikely. He wouldn't he wouldn't pull out the tournament. Unless he was jet, and, and, and he might be on one out of six because he was ill, but then he would pull, then he might pull out. But that's obviously not a rage quit, so no chance. Even if he lost this game, he will be back to play this afternoon. Respect to the tournament, respect to his opponents. Yes, of course, he'd be super disappointed, and he'd have to bounce back and pick dust him, pick himself up, dust himself down. But he would not. He wouldn't rage quit. No, definitely not. I've never known him do it anyway. So White's playing, I believe, some excellent moves now. He takes the advantage of the fact that his king is now able to cover this pawn by playing the move knight to c5. Oh, oh. I mean, this got a6 is a big, a big, big issue here, isn't it? I don't know what's. Yeah, saying he's on five out of five is more impressive. I agree, but you know, it will when you're on a hundred percent. Your, your rate of performance is not necessarily an accurate guide to your true performance. Mind you, rate of performance might never be that as well. But it's a bit of a better handle, especially when you're not on 100%. What is happening here? Can we see any way that Simon... I'm struggling to see how Simon can can, can, can even save this, maybe. Yeah, I do remember when Simon's on 5 out of 5 in Title Tuesday. I can feel this pain here. I don't think I don't I don't think you can move the king. I think this a6 threat's just this just too big, isn't it? So let's say king f6. I think I just go a6, don't I? Oh, I don't see how you can stop me going b5, b6. Rook a8 to b8 has to be tried, okay? So we need oh so we need to oh okay so, well, so rook a8 and then a6 and then Oh, the point is we go rook b8, is that right? But we're not even threatening to take the pawn, are we, because of a7, but... Short castling for Simon. <laughs> I don't know if it's answered, but uh, maybe now we can... We can now maybe bring the king king in, because this pawn can't advance, we take it. If the a pawn advances, we go back to a8 and we take it. So temporarily... This idea of rook a8 to b8, it sticks white temporarily. So then we bring the king in. So the only way, the only way to stop the pawn, knight b7, that's an interesting idea. 
a very interesting idea. <coughs> he hasn't played Rook A8, so this could be game over. That's an interesting idea, Knight Bissell, by the way. Wow, good afternoon to all the viewers who are joining us from Anna Cramling's party. Thank you very much for the raid. I hope Anna's enjoying herself. Unfortunately, you join us here in a pretty poor situation. If we join the live board, we believe that Simon is heading for a defeat. King G7, Knight, the engine confirms completely winning for White. Oh dear. Knight C5, King F6. And indeed, White's played A6. I think it is. I'm not Ginger Gem. Thank you, Ahmed Chess. Ginger Gem, funnily enough, is on the screen in front of you, playing on the live position from Reykjavik. My name is Blair Connell. It's a bad day for the stream. It's certainly a bad day in the office here. Not necessarily for me personally, but I'm covering Simon's games. And it looks like he's going to succumb to defeat after his opponent's played the highly accurate A6. Anyway, welcome. Welcome to the Ginger M channel. I'm Blair Connell. I'm covering. I was with Fiona Steele Antoni. She's had to leave us to watch the Liverpool game. That's a bit of a bad thing as well. Live board, forgive me, that is the live board, by the way, Jimmy Billy. A6, we are on the live board. That has just happened. That's very kind of you. Thank you very much. But we see Ginger GM, sadly, he was facing back to back defeats after his loss yesterday to the very strong Emre Can Chan, forgive me, the Turkish player. He's now facing this avalanche of pawns on the queen side. The white king is in time to stop any distraction techniques by the um, the, the D pawn. I will have it down to play. Maybe some of the chat can answer that so I don't have to move off the live board if that's all right. The Jin Gem needs to bounce back quickly. You can see now he's realized that he's got, you can see by his body language, it is pretty bad, basically. This is not good. I think he knows that the writing is on the wall. And yeah, very unfortunate that everyone lost this morning. Well, everyone's about to lose this morning. Yeah, you can see White keeping his focus there, not getting distracted by the potential of taking down the Jin Gem, who had a one move win earlier in this game, quite annoyingly. We, I don't want to go back. I can't relive the pain. You can see Simon's now just trying to work out if there's any way. Any, well, Eric, one of the streamers won because he was playing one of the other streamers, I was led to believe. That's not the case, but it is the case that Eric Rosen was playing one of the streamers. Maybe Anna, was he playing? Was he playing Anna? Was he playing um, Alexandra? I'm not quite sure. Simon was winning in one move. I'm, I'm reluctant to put the move on the board. Just for the, 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 the okay, I was just saying, let's go back, let's see it. So in this position, let's just go back and show you what could have happened. I'll rush through a little bit to the key moment. Simon started to get on top of this position. He played knight f4, f5, he started to attack. White played knight f3, potentially with the idea of taking on e5, exploiting the pin on this d-pawn Simon played f takes e4. White very quickly played knight takes e5, which unfortunately, Simon, all he had to do was, I was thinking initially maybe queen e6, but all he has to do is play queen c8, defending his c pawn. And incredibly, the knight on e5 is trapped. It has absolutely no safe squares. Mike would maybe have to do a kamikaze sacrifice of the knight. But what's remarkable about what happened next was, so it's a very weird tactic, I agree. But Simon actually did do a queen retreat, queen to e8. But of course, the problem with Simon's queen retreat was, although it kept an eye on the seas, it's a strange move, I agree, Fat Barbie. But it's just quite strange that Simon played queen e8, a queen retreat. Obviously, Simon, because it's queen's on attack. But by keeping an eye on the c6 pawn, he took his eye off the g4 square. Yes, I'm very, by the way, I was saying live. I don't think I've ever seen a knight in a position like this trapped on e5. I mean, there must be some situation where it's happened. Of course there are. I'm just not sure I've ever seen it. Sadly, if Simon had found the move queen c8, white's only sort of way, white's, white could have resigned from in a grandmaster perspective. But white's only sort of spoiling tactic would have been knight takes g6. 
h takes g6 rook takes e4 black is a fairly comfortable piece up and in actual fact it might be black who's continued the attack with an extra minor piece the slight weakening around the black king is not going to be so significant sorry back in which position what about after queen c8 what about knight d3 i think the knight ah oh, i think there's a suggestion actually it's quite clever actually the knight can take the knight here i believe because maybe you're looking at the idea of rookie servant by the way so i think knight d3 the key thing is to take it with the knight not take it with the pawn by the way Dave is gold bridge well brilliant simon is a 2300 gm well we both know that's a not true because he's 2460 and b that's just a ridiculous comment isn't it so he's a 2300 gm but there you go you're entitled to your opinion you know what we love that don't we twisting the knife when someone's struggling let's kick them while they're down surely you're better than that Simon is a bit stronger than that now so anyway let's not bite everyone's entitled to their opinion and as well so I was going to say this as well if I was a GM I'd be happy whatever you know but there we go let's not bite of course David Goldberg is very strong <coughs> had the best game of the year I would suggest as well so thank you for the support I appreciate Simon may not be the strongest grandmaster in the world nonetheless he's an incredible player and a brilliant grandmaster and indeed thank you very much for the support very nice we all love the ginger gm who doesn't exactly that beautiful comment fat underscore barbie check out his game from round two one of the games of the year i was saying quite ridiculously optimistically one of my ambitions of this year was to play the best game of the year well i've got no chance anymore i probably had no chance on january the first i certainly don't have any chance now following simon's game in round two check that out anyway people are of course <laughs> welcome to their opinions and we welcome people's different opinions going back to the live position i'm just wondering has simon he's played he, he, he gambled with d3 trying desperately to cause some confusion in the uh white's position but i don't think it's necessarily going to be enough maybe simon's idea is to try and just hopefully try and move such as rookie seven trying to cut the king off but i suspect that white has time to take the pawn on d3 and then just come back calmly with his knight to c5 i'm afraid at least he's trying one last little throw of the dice trying to just confuse his opponent maybe a little bit he's got to try something in this position and maybe this something is to play the pawn to d3 who knows is there any hope like, where there's <coughs> they say where there's life there's hope I suspect all there is is a little bit of life. Trendy, have I noticed how many 2300 viewers? Well, we have 2300 viewers. That's because, in fairness, we did have 5,000 rated from Anna Kramlin's channel. So we've only lost half. We've only lost half of, our, of, of the rating viewers, which is understandable. I appreciate people come to see their favourite streamers, Anna, Dina, Alexandra. And of course, why, if you could see these three incredibly strong players would you even bother with a 2300 gm that would be ridiculous exactly 20 why would you even bother if you could see these other other streams it's quite interesting that um david goldbridge you're of course you're allowed to watch you're allowed to comment it's quite entertaining though that you've come from i guess you come from a streamer who's possibly not 2300 a lovely player but there we go anyway enough said all sarcasm exactly more power to everyone the more power to everyone who are coming over across and it's lovely to see more importantly anna alexandra dina and simon all getting the opportunity to play these games live etc etc i don't breathe getting too excited but i'm also a little bit upset about what's happening on the board white is deep in thought Raider Johnson, lovely comment. There we go. Let's keep the love flowing. Let's all try and support everyone. There's no reason to denigrate any individual player. So there we go. All personality. They're all there to try their best, to play their best, etc., etc. There's my little positive speech over. Is there any way in which White can maybe make a mistake? And of course, Titus Arminius making the very fair point to play chess. Chess is such a competitive game nowadays. I know from being a sort of 2250 player how hard that level is. I can't contemplate how hard it is to be a 2500 player 
you know, nowadays to be that good, you really do need to keep up. Okay, White's played King F3. He's just keeping everything calmly under control, not doing anything. You're not, I'm pretty sure Black's l losing this position. I think the issue is that White's taking a very, a very sort of solid approach. He doesn't want to do any crazy calculation. He's just bringing that king towards the D pawn, making sure that D pawn's not a threat. His plan is definitely to play B5 clearly and then B6. So, you know, what, what, just, what, what can Black do is King E5. I don't think there's too much. B5, B6, very much the idea here for White. The key point being the knight is covering the pawn on A6. Once the pawn gets to B5, it clears only one square away, not just one square close to queening, but it start, suddenly starts to create threats of like the rook on A7. So the writing and the wall may have coincided in where they are in the world. The writing very much being on the wall, the writing in this situation, suggesting that why F3 and not F1? I guess I think both are absolutely fine, by the way, Richie Max. I think the key thing is that you just want to bring the king a little bit closer. I don't think he, I don't think King F3 spoils anything. They, I think he was thinking about King F3. Uh, I think it's fine. I think the principle is moving the king to the F file doesn't spoil anything. If, I don't have King F1. If King F1 is slightly more accurate, it's probably just because it's still winning. But I think the idea is that either way, you bring the king inside the square to cover this pawn's advance. So either way, you can meet D2 with King E2. Let's see what's happened on the live board. It's gone King F3. Simon has played a move. Has he tried anything? He's tried King E5, which is understandable. I think Simon's going to try anything to try and confuse the issue. Normal, that's super. Could Simon have underestimated his opponent in this game? His opponent, you know, gave Simon... Well, Simon did have a lovely position. I think he just then... I think he possibly saw himself... Missed, saw, saw that he missed this opportunity of winning the game and... I think that sort of put him off stride a little bit. Did he have underestimate? He could have underestimated his opponent. It's entirely possible. He certainly went all out. He certainly could have made draws at some point. And understandably, he went out to to uh, win the game. King e3 has to come now. This is getting a little bit tricky, actually, because I think it, if you go king e3, then I think there might be some... I think there's... I think you can even try d2 as black here because now the king has to take and we've actually got a little bit of counterplay as black i think white may need to be a little bit careful i'm not quite sure what's happening now this might be a draw there might be a draw if this happens so by the way king e3 looks incredibly natural king e3 is a draw so he's got okay so he's got to just so ah oh, so he needs to advance the pawn now b5 threatening b6 so it's like one last trick of Simon's to play King e5. The white king doesn't necessarily need to advance to the square e3. In fact, probably we've been told it'd be a huge mistake. It's already, already able to cover the pawn. If black ever were to play d2, the king can slide back to e2, covering that queen square, winning the pawn or just blocking the queen square off. I agree. I didn't expect king e3 to be a, a computer draw. What about knight takes with check? I think we've got the same issue that maybe king, to, but this might still be right, but these pawns are starting to become very, very weak. So we're being told that apparently, and I believe, I'm not sure, maybe knight takes d3 is okay. It seems okay to me. We're basically told that well, b5 is definitely the winning move. Apparently knight d3 checks okay as well. b5 is the winning move because if black ever tries d2, the king can now, the advantage of having the king on f3, it slides back to e2. Covering the queen square, the knight and these two pawns are far too strong t t for this rook. So if the king came across threatening the knight, it does not in time. The pawn advances. The knight can't be taken because the rook's under attack. The knight and those two pawns will be able to dominate the proceedings and one of those pawns will end up being a queen. It's very hard for us to wish white to play king e3. The king e3 is, is, is it's an understandable move, by the way. We've just played king f3. It doesn't look like there should be any problem with king e3, but there is a big problem with king e3, as we said, d2. Simon setting up one last trick, one last trap. So it just goes to show, you know, whoever you are, you need to be so, you know, switched on right to the end degree. D2, 
the B5 is the easiest or the, the best way to win, the most accurate way to win for white because those pawns are too quick. The king's already done his job. You're surprised why hasn't played B5? I'm, I'm, I'm not surprised he hasn't played B5. He's still got seven minutes on his clock, 30 second increment. There we go. So the rook is under attack. Can he give checks? So what do we think about B5? It's hard to envisage. It's definitely not a draw now. It's white's go. White should be playing B5 apparently is the most accurate way or the, the, the best way. The, the, the risk-free way, or not the risk-free, the, the, the quickest or the best way to win this position is B5. I don't think it's impossible he'll play king E3, by the way, but as I say, the king's already done its job by getting getting inside what's called the square. So it's already doesn't need to rush back to stop this pawn. It's already in principle stopping the pawn from advancing. But absolutely, there's a pressure on here, you know. He's just gone king f3. I I think if he was going to play, if he were going to play king e3, he'd have played it very quickly. I think he's far less likely to play it now. Maybe he was thinking it's just such a easy way to win. I'd like the knights protected, this protected. I don't need... Excuse me, I don't need to worry about my knight and my pawns over here. They're just fine. I'll just eliminate that d3 pawn. But I think the fact he's thought about it for a good few minutes now, whether he was intending to play king e3 or not, which he may not have been, he's maybe just double checking everything. Maybe he's thinking, maybe spotted that king e3 is not a great idea. I don't rule it out, but I think it's unlikely. Because king e3 would be an understandable move, just thinking, as I say, you know, you don't need to rush anything, just eliminate any possible danger that that pawn on d3 creates so you know king e3 would actually be an understandable move however likely or unlikely it is referee wants to go for lunch just draw yeah we like that is, is king e3 still winning really is it okay oh well certainly king e3 gives, gives black a chance at least even if it's if, even if it's winning that's it who knows yeah Paul, and that's how we say it, absolutely. There we go. Very nice. Nice to see some good comments. So I hope that everyone's enjoying tuning in to the other streamers and just nice of them to drop by. They do so at a slightly unfortunate moment for the Ginger GM who's right up against it here. Sadly, he is. Not too much to say until... So King 3 might not be winning for White. So King, if it's plus 0.4, it's definitely not winning for White. It doesn't mean White won't win if they play King E3. But it certainly means that from the computer point of view, it is going to be very, very. it certainly could be a draw if, if White play King E3. I think, it's just, I think it's going to play B5. I think it's just calculating out, just making sure there's no tricks that can sort of happen between the pawn if the rook gets three. B5 is definitely finito, absolutely. I think it's just double checking to make sure that, you know, leaving this pawn on the board does allow, you know, you've got to be just a tiny bit careful about this rook getting free, causing some issues. I don't know, if you go b5, maybe you have to think about a move like king d4. I mean, I know it's not going to, I know it's losing. Um, no, the next round starts in two hours, 15 minutes, by the way. So it starts off, it's a little bit delayed because of the two round. Not delayed, but it's later than it is on the one round days. And unfortunately, he has played B5. Congratulations, or not congratulations just yet, but fantastic move. No trickeries allowed there. White has shut him down with the move B5. He's calculated it out. It is... Hi, guys. Hi, Steve, Caroline, Dave. That's you too. Lovely to see you here. Unfortunately... Two fantastic people, the ledgers, and they're joining us as the writing is on the wall for Simon. There's little left to be done here, exactly. He didn't fall for his trap. The trap, which was king e3, d2, allowing the black king away into the position. Certainly, whether we believe that would have been a draw. Raider Johnson, thank you very much for gifting us subs. Very kind of you to support us at such a disappointing moment for fans of the Jin Gem of which I am possibly, I most certainly am one. It's gonna be pretty hard to pick ourselves up for the second round today. Gonna to be pretty tricky to do that. Simon was on two and a half out four. 
it looks almost certain if he's going to go to two and a half out of five it appears that there's very little way that he can even continue to trick this position up against his opponent maybe he tries king maybe he just has to play i don't know d d2 king i don't know what's the best try maybe d oh, there's, there's no tries here either i don't think there's any sensible tries there's not much to be done here King d4. Yeah, I think the issue with King d4 is that if White's sensible, they just go b6, I guess, yeah? But for King d4, maybe, I think White would find b6. Apparently, he has to play Rook a8. Yeah, we think that was that was probably a little bit better. We still think it's probably losing. It might be it might be the case. But a good suggestion, thank you for that. Rook a8, as being suggested, might have put up a little bit more resistance. The only thing was, the way that Simon played it was a little bit trickier for his opponent, I think. Rook a8 kind of would have lost maybe in a bit slower time might not have eventually lost but it would have lost a bit slower time it certainly might have been a preferable choice to the silicon beasts as the engines the computers we know them but it's still lost it's definitely lost here maybe king d4 but then again i think it's not very hard for white to see the move b6 you know again these these, these pawns crashing through most importantly it does attack the rook on a7 so or well, most importantly, it becomes closer to getting to a queen. So these things are like, yeah, pretty, pretty tough. It's going to be a tough, it's going to be a really tough, um, you know, defeat for Simon. Bear in mind, he had a tough game yesterday. Um, you know, he did. Things would have been oh so different. I was so excited, excited earlier, still excited now, despite the disappointment of what, what's happening here. Just to let people know, as we do have a few viewers, you can check out, if you ever want to support the stream, there is a massive sale on at gingergm.com. Check it out. Some really good stuff there. If you do want to like look at some of the stuff, a massive sale up to 50% off everything to get a discount price on everything at gingergm. Forgive me for that little commercial interlude, but I appreciate it. If anyone is out there, there's a great sale going on. So there are some really good products there if you want to improve your chess and also support the gingergm. I think it's going to be difficult to support him in his quest for anything other than a defeat that he looks like he's going down to today. He's as ever not giving up, keeping his composure to the best of his ability. He knows that there's very little to do in this situation, but he's still going to try and find, he's not going to sulk, he's not going to cry. 700 just left, I know. Well, there we go. Maybe should have, I didn't want to bombard them only straight away. I can't see how many there are left, by the way. Anyway, mate, it's not that if whoever there are left, they won't be here with us for much longer. I don't think I'll be here much longer. This was a Sicilian defense with three bishop b5 check after two d6, what is known, I believe, as the canal variation or the canal attack. I'm not sure why it's called that. It'd be interesting. If anyone who knows their openings in chess history can tell me why bishop b5 check is called the canal attack. It was a pretty solid opening by White. He did his preparation. Simon gradually, as we saw, edged into a position where he arguably had the advantage. He certainly, the momentum started to come with him. He then found his opponent, Esteban Canal, proven player. Thank you so much, Blue Grey Hayes. There you go. Didn't know that. Simon gradually began to get on top. He put the pressure on his opponent, who ended up making a mistake. And unfortunately, Simon was unable or did not on this, not unable, but he did not take advantage of that on this situation. Simon's gone with D2. Not quite sure how this, I think, I think, well, King D4. They're all roads. White's obviously going to stop this pawn. King E2. I uh, don't even know what side. Simon, like Simon going to try King D4. Yeah, of course, he's got to try that. B6 is the way to win here. It's very important that he should play that. So maybe he's tried to uh, cause him some some issues. So we're thinking about. So after b6, I think what we're going to try now, we're going to try king c3. Is that we're still going to keep going? We're going to keep on going. Hmm, interesting, isn't it? Maybe we can keep on going. So Simon's still making it tricky. Very good. Thank you for the chat. Keep the suggestions coming. If I had an engine running, I'd probably be able to tell you a little bit more what's going on here. But so Simon's keeping the. Um, pressure going I guess b6 is the only way to win here for white I guess you have to you can't do anything else so what is the time situation okay white's well, got three and a half minutes left 
There's king to c3. I, I didn't realise there was such a possibility of even causing some more. I don't know. It may not be enough to distract white from the victory. But if black promotes white will have an extra knight. Okay, that's a bit of an issue. I see what you mean. So white could maybe just even allow what you're saying. White could even... Yeah, that makes sense. So white could even allow. But he never really wants to allow... He has played b6. Fair play to... You never really want to allow your opponent to promote the to promote with check. Yeah, exactly. Could there always be a little bit of an issue here? So we're suggesting that Simon should go king to c3. You never really win. It's funny, Simon's make it very complicated. It's always I appreciate what was being said there that if they both promote, white will have an extra pass pawn and an extra knight. But black will be promoted with check. So you never really want to allow that. So maybe white might get confused here and play play a different move. But it's hard to see a move other than pawn takes a7. Knight e4 check. The knight, the knight can be taken on e4, by the way. I think that's the... Or is there a way to... I think just the knight can be taken on e4. So he's cleverly he has taken the rook. So I'm just going to go king c2. White will, of course, promote the queen to a8. With a queen putting on my board simon will promote with check so at least simon's got a queen with check i'm not sure this uh, i didn't see this plan at all um i i guess with the knight on c5 there is no perpetual check for black so it's still losing unfortunately but you never know maybe the white is running a little bit short time the only thing is it's quite hard to see how white can go wrong here i mean sooner or later white will escape the checks you can't, I mean, how could white go wrong? I'm just trying to think, okay, ridiculously, let's just be so optimistic. King here might be one of the ways to go wrong. Just trying to find some way that white could go wrong. Maybe in a timescale panic, obviously is much better player than that. But yeah, could exactly that. I found that as well, Lord, so I'm quite proud of myself. I'm not, obviously, it's unlike this would happen. But you never know. White promotes to a bishop. <laughs> that would be... Uh, or maybe there's another way. Why, why, I forgot, I'm not entirely sure what what the legal ways are for promoting. So Simon's gone for. They actually went for the different ones there. The the the, the his opponent pushed his pawn to a and then found a queen. Simon just replaced or didn't replace. Simon put a queen on the queen in square and took his pawn off the board, which I believe are the only two ways of legally promoting nowadays. I don't think you suffer loss of game if you promote incorrectly. There we go. Anyway, check. King e3. Is there anything to be done here? Is the question. Maybe Simon's going to rely on his legendary blitz skills. If he had a mouse. Ah, so he's going for this idea. Hoping for king f3. Of course. White is not going to do that. But again, it is a little bit. This is actually a little bit scary. The only problem for this is after king f4. Oh, king d4. I don't think this works. Oh my god. I think it's a problem, isn't it? What? I just think Simon's just looking at it going, what have you done? He's just, he's just picking up the queen on a8. Queen c3 to d3. Queen c3 to f3. No, my god. I think Simon's just, oh my god. He hasn't done this. Oh my word. This is incredible. What has just happened? The guy is, oh, the guy's shocked. What just happened there? King f4, winning, bringing the queen back to f3. He's completely overlooked the fact that queen c3 is coming to f3. Oh my word, what an incredible turnaround. What a swindle. I do actually feel quite sorry for his opponent. Wow, I've got to say, of course, I'm delighted. But i do actually feel incredibly sorry this guy's worked so hard he played that move king d4 he had a couple of minutes on his clock there was no need to play king d4 so quickly he's literally gutted oh my god he can't believe what's happened and i chess is too hard if we just go back one move king f4 queen takes f2 i guess you play here but again you are dropping the knight on c5 so Okay, it's definitely winning with this pass pawn, but wow, Simon made it so difficult. Unfortunately for his opponent, there was, I didn't see this trick initially. We did see the idea that the queen on a8 was unprotected, but what happened next was check, check. We saw this idea, let me go back to the live board. Once white, once black queened, king e3, queen e1, 
and he blundered with his king d4 he thought he completely missed this idea that after check the the only move is king to d5 he's so shocked by the way because the only legal move on the boards is king d5 and he hasn't played it so we can tell obviously is how shocked he is there is only one legal move on the board which is king d5 and he hasn't even brought himself to play this move he did play the end game so incredibly well i'm not some, do you know what he's a grown man but i'd be crying i'd have no shame in crying tears if i were white here he's got to be that one move you know he's winning he's turned it around he's held he's i can literally feel the pain it is uh i don't think simon was going to take this i mean it'd be nice in this i don't know if this game's over it pretty much is it'd be interesting to see the reaction of the players at the end or certainly simon's reaction simon is a massive gentleman i have to say as far as sam i love the fact that simon's probably going to win this game now i can't take anything for granted but i think pretty much it is going to be the case white has eventually after a couple of minutes brought himself to play the only move the only legal move king d5 simon has obviously gone spotted no doubt queen f3 check i don't feel i was going to say i don't feel there's much to be done but of course simon's jumping up and down because it keeps him in the game you know had he lost this game it would have been hard for him to get back into playing strong players in this tournament It'd be quite difficult for me to cover his games. Obviously, this is I just wow. It's very just. I mean, this God, it's hard. It's, uh, excuse my saying that. It's a tough life, isn't it? It's a really, really tough life to have this situation. I was there. There is increment of thirty seconds. Yes, so there will be for the rest of the game. Let me just get back to live boards. So King D five, Queen F three, as we know, skewering this Queen on A eight. King C four, Queen takes eight. King B five. Okay, so White's trying to make it as tricky as he's now trying to make it as tricky as he can. White still has a pass pawn on a6. Simon goes, stops it in its tracks, queen a7. I think the issue for White here is that Black's king can sort of come across very quickly. And even if he, even if he had to give up his queen eventually, which is probably another thing he needs to do, the Black king would have gobbled up, hoovered up all those pawns on the king side the issue with john being massively tilted is there's not much left to do anyway you know it's kind of like he's massively upset because of what he's done to his, what he's done to himself and i feel his pain i really do i don't think white should resign and i don't think he's playing on because simon didn't resign simon made it tricky but you know it's just uh what could we say maybe i should be quiet for a minute i don't know the knight doesn't have a route moving through. We're just talking about, yeah, the knight doesn't even have a way to try and shepherd this, to advance this pawn any further. Maybe the knight has to try and win some pawns over here, but it's just going to get picked up. And then the black kings, the black kings going to make us way across. Yeah, absolutely six pounder. Absolutely correct. You can really only understand that pain if you've been in a position. And the guy, you know, he's up against the ginger GM. He probably knows that he might, well, he knows he's on a live board, streamed live. We saw he came back from a mistake early in the game. He played incredibly well after that. He played this end game incredibly well. He didn't bail out. He didn't go for the draw. He went for the victory. And he had the victory in his sights, in his grasp. And sadly, right at the moment, well, there's always a moment. That's the point in chess. There's always a chance of going wrong. You know, it's not over till it's over let's keep up to date let's just watch the end of the game because we know what's happened the turnarounds the swings in fortune that have happened in this game wow they've been one way then the pendulum's gone the other let us hope forgive me from a biased point of view let us hope there are no further swings of fortune in this game absolutely universal chess life you know next time take your tablet to the bathroom or take some because incredibly yeah white did not spot the danger put his king he actually only had one square by the way and let's go back i can understand why he did this in a sense after queen e1 check i think the only way to win for white is to go king f4 queen takes f2 and then i believe maybe you've got to drop the, the point is you've got to drop the knight on e5 on c5 it is definitely still winning because this pawn is so far advanced by the way 
But it's fun enough. It, why, the reason why White played King D4, yes, it's a big blunder, of course. It's a losing move because of the tactic that was allowed. But he did it because he didn't, he, the, he saw immediately, he saw Queen F, King F3, no doubt, Queen H1, skewering in the same manner. But what he did not want to do was to absolutely drop his knight to lose the pawn left two to check. He did make a mistake. We have to say that. Let's go back to lie position. Is there anything left to be done? Um, Queen a7, knight a4, Simon has played a move. And this is a problem for white. The king is just going to come in, hoover up these pawns. And then whatever almost happens over on the queen, queen side of the board, the f pawn is going to be going for glory yeah poor opponent indeed i mean i can say that yes absolutely steve ledger or dave and caroline thank you we needed that sort of like support from people who've known him for a long time so yes thank you very much you did indeed please feel free to join at any moment because yes absolutely you did really join us just as i wrote off just as i said listen to me i said we're in the final throws who knows i could easily have switched not switched off or i could easily have made a mistake with the white pieces i was thinking it's all said and done it's all over and yet we still did not have that final it's not over till it's over till the proverbial fat lady sings an operatic reference there just to show that i'm not as much as a philistine as people have called me i do know where this comment came from knight c5 is a check and that but that is all it is i suppose the other thing is with the king and the queen so so far apart there is no way that um white even has the swindling chances with the knight i think white's going to shake his hand here it was amazing how he found ways for the game to keep going actually past but i just didn't even see this king c3 king c2 march and white did everything right funnily enough white did everything right and he really had to get to a situation where he was going to go down to a queen and pawn endgame but it was the winning queen of pawn endgame but he did have to sacrifice or give up his f2 pawn his c5 knight i'm not is there was there a way so maybe like yeah there we go that's six oh dear 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 unlucky to simon's opponent he's absolutely understandably gutted i have to say it would be unreasonable of me not to say incredible commiserations to his opponent who put up not just a great fight but a winning of, of what was from three and a half out of five indeed Noel Costigan so good from our perspective three and a half out of five indeed um yeah Simon as humble as ever he I know Simon well he really is a gentleman he will you know take the victory of course but he will understand he's felt his pain in life he's felt his pain in chess he will understand how disappointed his opponent is going to be in a situation like that.